got the Asus Maximus. This is the Maximus 6 Gene motherboard, and uh, it's a Micro ATX motherboard with all kinds of fancy stuff. Can you see all this fancy stuff that it comes with? We're gonna cover that when we open it up, and I'm gonna try to make this a shorter video because I'm gonna be doing a build with this where I'll be getting, um, you know, a little bit more down to brass tacks with this thing. So first thing I'm gonna do is pull it out, set it aside, and show you the accessories that we get in the box. So of course you've got your uh, I.O. panel for the back, and everything is nice and labeled. It has a black um, graphic with the ROG logo right over there in the corner. Okay, this is uh, actually pretty cool. Um, I'll, I'll get to that in a second, because it's actually so cool it deserves its own segment. Uh, there's our SLI bridge with the ROG logo on it. We've got, yeah, six uh, SATA cables, and uh, there's eight SATA on board, so lots of those. There's a Q connector, some standoffs. The Q connector is the handiest, handiest thing ever? The most handy or handiest, I don't know. I'm not a grammatologist. Some stickers and stuff. You can put these on your cables. You're like, hey, uh, this is really handy for your SATA cables. And uh, this is if you're silly, or a silly person. Enter. I always take this with me to hotels and throws people off. User guide and drivers. Let me turn that around on CD. All right, let's take a look at the actual motherboard itself. All right, I want to note that I haven't actually played with this yet. I'll be uh, installing this soon, but I wanted to give you guys an overview of the actual motherboard before I installed it, you know, while it's out here on the table and everything. We'll see how much I remember from when JJ was here. First off, uh, socket 1150 for Haswell CPUs. Uh, and this thing is going to be quite nice for overclocking thanks to the Digi Plus. Um, you know, VRM, this is like the third generation, I believe, of that. Yeah, D D Digi Plus 3, they call it. Uh, we've got Blackwing chokes. The chokes are, are rated at 60 amps. It's like twice as, as good as like a generic choke. Um, some of the best MOSFETs you can get on the planet. And I also want to note that all of the caps, of course, they're, uh, you know, solid state capacitors from Japan, but they're not just the standard solid state capacitors you see on, you know, any old motherboard. These are like as good as it gets. These are 10K capacitors. Most of the time, if you look close at the capacitors, they'll be like 2K or 5K. So we have 10K capacitors here. Now that's gonna give you really clean power going to your um, your motherboard. Also, we got these fins here. This is gonna you know lower the temperatures on the um, the entire VRM by a few degrees Celsius. Uh, you know, anything anything that can help. Um, and also the T-topology on this is next generation as well. So all of the different routes going to and fro are um, fancy. <laughs> that's over here four RAM slots, and uh, this is capable of running DDR3 at speeds of up to 3,000 uh, megahertz. That's with overclocking, of course. Up here's our memo K button, and uh, I won't entirely get into this, but this can really help uh, if you're having some trouble with your memory, but it can also be sort of a soft, re or a soft uh, CMOS reset because it only uh, resets like the frequencies on the CPU and uh, the RAM. It's not gonna mess with any of your other settings uh, in your um, UEFI. All right, got some fan connectors there. There's your 24-pin uh, power connector and then uh, USB 3 there. And you can see here we have uh, eight SATA connectors. They're all six gigabits per second. Gotta, gotta love that. Uh, moving on down here, you know, front panel connectors and things. Um, and then beside that, another uh, fan connector. There's your direct key. And then your uh, TPM, Trusted Platform Module. If you need that, you probably know what that is. But if you don't know what that is, you probably don't need it. Uh, USB, you know, headers down here and audio headers, all that fancy stuff. And also we have a 1394 header as well down here. Uh, power and reset right on board. Hey, SP diff there. Now let's check out um, the audio because this has what they're claiming is some of the best onboard audio on the planet. And you'll notice this is the one spot on the motherboard where the capacitors are different. They're using um, premium ELNA capacitors from Japan. And these are specific for the audio to give it a nice uh, warmer sound. And there's also an op amp on board. So with the Supreme FX, they, they've gone, you know, kind of crazy with it. Uh, signal to noise ratio on this, I believe is 105 or 115. I'll have to double check, uh, but it's probably pretty much, it should be a nice transparent source. I'm not sure what the output impedance is. I'll have to try out some headphones and just see how it sounds compared to like, you know, the O2 amp DAC that I have. But this should be as good, if not better, uh, than most sound card solutions. Check this out, they've got it, you know, separated from the rest of the components on the, on the motherboard. And that's gonna help out with some of the noise. Uh, it's not gonna help out with like the static and stuff that's going on in the system, but it is gonna help out with noise that's coming from the other components that are on um, in the PCB here. 
So that's nice and fancy. All right. Also, uh, oh, another fan connector there. Can't forget that. Those are very important. Uh, you can see here we have two 16-speed PCI Express connectors, and this does support uh, Crossfire and SLI. And down here on the bottom, we have another PCI Express connector. This could be great for, you know, I don't know, an extra network card, or if you wanted to run a dual network card, or I don't know. You guys tell me what you're going to be putting in there. All right, let's take a look at the back. Audio, eight-channel audio, and I did double-check. The signal-noise ratio is 115 decibels, so you shouldn't hear any noise at all with uh, even 32-ohm headphones. Intel NIC in there, and we've also got something uh, called Game First, which is interesting. In the UEFI, uh, it'll allow you to, uh, you know, select what packets you want to have priority. So packet prioritization is really cool, and I love that they've integrated it into the UEFI so it, you don't even need software. If you want gaming or peer-to-peer -peer file sharing or whatever to have the priority, as far as the packet prioritization goes, this sounds really wordy. Yeah, you can do it. USB 3.0, two of those there. Optical audio, HDMI, supports 4K at 24 hertz. More USB 3.0, USB 2.0, Clear CMOS and uh, USB BIOS flashback, and you can check out our video on that. It also worked with ROG Connect. And then there's absolutely nothing here, except for freaking this. This is, stay there. Oh, I'm putting it in backwards. Yep, <laughs> that's how it goes. It screws on right there. And this is your um, MPCI Express or your Mini PCI Express Combo 2 card. So this gives you, um, you know, a Mini PCI Express, but it also gives you an M2 slot. M2 is going to be replacing M SATA very soon. There's not a lot of M2 uh, drives out right now, but it is the next generation uh, for tiny storage, tiny SATA type storage. The uh, Mini PCI Express will allow you to hook up like wireless or, you know, all kinds of different things to that. So those are inside there and it plugs in right here. Yeah. And there's a ton of stuff that you can do with this. A couple more things to know before we close out the video. It does have the, um, the connector for the ROG front panel, um, you know, OC panel, uh, and that's pretty cool. It's an additional accessory that you can pick up if you, uh, you know, if you want to have like all the front panel coolness and also uh, external overclocking through that is possible. Speaking of overclocking, this one also has the uh, dual intelligent processors. And if you've seen the old videos with Asus uh, and with JJ, uh, you'll know exactly what that means. If not, uh, it's got EPU and TPU. EPU is like an energy efficient mode and it, it's an under voltage algorithm. Um, and it can be used for people who are just trying to save some power, but you're not gonna be using that with this. Guarantee you're not gonna be using that with this. You're probably gonna be using either the TPU or you're going to be doing the overclock yourself. And you can do that with the uh, OC panel, you can do it in the UEFI, uh, or you can even do it right in Windows uh, with four-way optimization. Four-way optimization actually really works. And uh, we've got some videos on that, and it works on this motherboard. So all in all, a ton of features on this motherboard, um, premium components everywhere, spared no expense as far as any of that goes. Uh, probably one of the best micro ATX Z87 motherboards, and that's why we chose this motherboard to be our new editing rig, and uh, we're gonna be using it for editing, capture, and some gaming. So, we'll be doing a video on that soon, and you'll get a little closer look at this, but for now, this should give you a good idea of what you can do with this motherboard.